Yeah, I mean, uh, general MBA versus specialization is has been a debate for a while now, and and uh, I think that uh, there is no you know one size that fits all. So uh, I mean, you know, you have to look at the student, uh, you know, what stage of the career the student is in, how clear is the student about what he or she wants to do, and what is the final objective of of doing this uh, post graduation. So. Uh, for example, if you are new, you are just a graduate and you want to get into an MBA, uh, I believe that the primary objective of an MBA is to give an, a bird's eye view of, uh, you know, how a business works, you know, and all the functional uh, aspects of you know, finance, marketing, HR, and now analytics and, and operations and all of that. So I think that is the, uh, the first thing that needs to be accomplished. Now, over and above that, if that person is pretty clear that, you know, I want to get into finance, you know, so he or she can choose an MBA in finance or can do an, a regular MBA specializing in finance. So all those options are available. However, if somebody is experienced and, uh, you know, has worked for five, six years, knows that, you know, I am a supply chain person and this is what I want to do for the rest of my, let's say, next 20 years of my life or 15 years of, of my life can actually look at options which are, you know, MBA in supply chain, one-year program, very specialized, where you need to have that maturity to pick that. So I think that, you know, both general and specialized MBAs have their, uh, you know, importance. Uh, I think uh, the person has to be an independent thinker, think for himself or herself and pick the one that suits uh, him or her. Yeah, I think that, that's yeah. what I feel, yeah. Definitely. So, uh, per se, if we talk about specialized MBA, we always talk that switching is an option, uh, is not an option, because you are too focused and you have uh, done all your uh, uh, learning and courses in one area and one field. So, you become limited in that aspect. But here we are talking about business analytics, right, and data sciences. So, I think this finds application across fields. So if specialization in business analytics per se, then I think a specialized course is better than a general MBA. So we'll come to that later, I guess. So for now, I think uh, as I would personally say a general MBA, as Professor Chalantri said, that it holds its own importance um, for students who have very little experience in any of the industry domains. While specialized MBA are meant for those students who have had three to four years career in some industry, and they want to build on that experience. Uh, Professor Shushar, I think I'll just, uh, you know, what Professor Shelley said is very interesting. She says that uh, a specialist MBA in MBA in data sciences or business analytics cuts across all industries because every industry needs to have an MBA in data sciences. Uh, do you agree right. with that? And do you still think that a specialization in data sciences and, MBA, uh, and business analytics is less risky than many other specializations that you have on offer? Correct. Yeah. So industry industry wide, I speak. Um, uh, then definitely all the industries, starting from uh, you know uh, any energy any energy industry or uh, any entertainment industry, any industry you will say like finance, banking, then oil and gas. All of them are actually using uh, data science. All of them are using data analytics because we know like all the industries are actually uh, uh, you know generating the data knowingly or unknowingly and this is this is not like current scenario where these uh, these words are like buzzing right now but it is since last 50 years we are able to uh, you know generate so much data but now the capabilities are there to process the data to get some insights from the data and that's where uh, you know this big data analytics or data science these words are uh, you know coming into the highlight so definitely every industry is using data or generating data as a byproduct. How you utilize it for your industry's, uh, you know, betterment or you can say in this, uh, you know, uh, uh, competi competition, dynamic competition, basically, uh, data science can definitely help a business to grow. And that's where the fusion comes, like technology plus the business. So if you are having the business mentality, the management mentality, along with that, if you have the tool which can uh, help you to, you know, uh, uh, get uh, uh, much profit in your business, at that particular time, you are hitting the right code. 
and that is where the specialized uh, mba programs uh, in data analytics or uh, data science is coming into the picture so definitely it is basically not not a risky affair compared to general mba because even with the specialization in the mba in the initial semester they are actually uh, you know teaching at least in our university and more majority uh, you know uh, uh, tier one universities they teach the basics of mba like accounting finance hr so many things they actually uh, you know teach and then uh, and then they be uh, you know ready with the uh, completely mba uh, track but after that they take a shift and then they take a special route to get the data uh, related uh, journey okay to generate the insights of the data yeah so th th that is my thought on this topic actually uh, at praxis we take make a difference between business analytics and data science because uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the business uh, so you know if if i have to uh, put it in a you know in an easy to understand manner a business analytics a business analytics person is a person who is a business person with a good understanding of analytics whereas a data scientist is a data data person who also understands business so that he or she can understand business uh, business problems and and kind of use the tools technologies techniques to 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 actually uh, you know solve them so uh, uh, so what we uh, so so coming to you know so even even the what what qualifies or who qualifies to do a business analytics or a data scientist kind of a specialization can be different uh, you know the kind of math and the kind of technology you need for data science you may not be that strict uh, when when you are looking at a business analytics person so yeah so i so a data scientist would create models to solve business problems and a business analytics specialized specialist could actually interpret those models and use them <laughs> to you know make better decisions for for the business so both are important and uh, uh, you can have an mba in both looking at right kind of so but you are saying that both are different and both have different kinds of uh, you know audiences seeking them out am i right in saying that that's right yes so particularly at bits pilani we do not offer mba in data sciences we are offering mba in business analytics and for that our requirement is to have some mathematics background because we have courses like statistics and quantitative quantitative modeling techniques are taught so some mathematics background are required is required in 10 plus 2 that's that means in your uh, intermediate level or in your graduation level and uh, that is the same thing applies for your undergrad courses as well so we do not take students without mathematics background so so tushar coming back to you uh, do you think an mba in business analytics uh, is more or less a general mba in a certain sense and then i come back to the second part of the question of do you need data sciences understanding at undergrad level to do an mba in data sciences yeah yeah so mba general mba versus mba in business analytics okay both are uh, fundamentally not the same uh, the general mba will include so many other things as well uh, 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 you know your hr your marketing your finance your it your operations so many things would be there but at the same time analytic business analytics is actually a special route which we are taking okay we we should know all these things of course as a mba uh, uh, graduate but at the same time business analytics is actually using uh, as uh, sir rightly said they need to interpret the models which uh, you know data scientist has created so to interpret those models they need some specialized skills like they should be know, uh, knowing python they should be knowing r programming language they should be good with the statistics probability mathematics basically so that is the core uh, prerequisite for business analytics uh, course particularly and uh, if i'm higher uh, you know um, looking for some um, uh, admission then definitely i would be actually interested in some students who are having a mixture kind of uh, background where a commerce student can be there who is actually good with uh, mathematics statistics accounting and all those things then they they are having some uh, you know initial prerequisite from a data science course as well and then when i am teaching them fundamentally the python r everything 
which at NBS Narayana Business School, we have a program where we start with a basic coding of Python. With the management subject, we also include the technical subject. So they are having, uh, you know, a good variety, and they are uh, they are having a win-win situation basically because they know something, and now they are additionally we are adding something, and we are from the second semester or second trimester making them ready for a data science course with business analytics. So it is mixture of both the world, uh, good aspects of both the world. So uh, uh, alone because will not uh, uh, you know help them in a longer run because our target is to make them ready for a techno managerial role because as a fresher they may get the job because right now the industry is booming but what after like five years ten years uh, down the line at that time their managerial skill is definitely something which would help them uh, to progress in their career in the techno managerial uh, side because ultimately they they need to progress right in their career they can't be the junior uh, developer or junior big data engineer at the uh, in the uh, uh, upcoming uh, you know five to ten years so uh, according to that they need to decide they need to choose the path basically and uh, uh, yeah that, that, that's how the thought process is going so on I'll tell you from what we have, I have seen over the last four or five years that we've been offering work. Uh, um, I would say that the person who chooses data science is somebody who's deeply interested in, in, the, in, in the core data science, uh, you know, uh, processes and techniques and, and is a bit of a, uh, I mean, quote unquote geek, right? And so has typically a tech background, maybe engineering or maybe a BSc in some one of the sciences. Okay, uh, has some previous knowledge of programming, or is willing to learn. Has has downloaded some program, you know, some courses, and actually should demonstrated an interest, and is confident of his or her math skills. And and you know, temperamentally, I think that is very important. Would rather, you know, spend time looking at you know complex problems and sitting and creating models to solve them. Uh, than you know interacting with businesses and taking daily decisions and all that so temperamentally also they are different they could have the same academic background but what they what, what the kind of roles they they like to do are different business analytics i think that you know in my opinion everybody should take that as as as, as a specialization because today the world is getting more and more data driven and you know not being data friendly is no longer a, a choice yeah so these are people who could be from any background, understand the value of uh, data today in today's world, are willing to, uh, you know, go the, take the hard route, learn. So, so some of them have good math skills, as Professor Tushar was saying, doesn't matter what background you come from, you have good math skills. Some of them do not, but we see a lot of improvement. So what we do at Praxis is that, you know, we keep it, make it open to everybody. Or, uh, to, but what we do is we give them, we, there are qualifying scores in certain subjects in the first year. So if you get those grades in the first year, you have demonstrated at least at a praxis level that you are able to, you know, navigate quant, statistics, programming, we teach programming to everybody, irrespective of uh, what their specialization is. You know, Python is like the fourth R for us, read, write, you know, arithmetic. And, and so if you can demonstrate that, then we induct you into business analytics. But for data science, we actually have a test over and above the threshold scores where that test has substantial SQL, Python, and mathematics and statistics. So because that's serious, right, in, in, in the technical technique kind of sense. So, so in a nutshell, uh, uh, business analytics, I think any pro, anybody with any background who, who demonstrates an, uh, a love and understanding of data uh, can, can come in. Data science, you have to be, you know, very, like let's say, passionate about the the technical part of it. Okay. So, uh, if I understand this correctly, Professor Charanpreet, what we are saying is, to do an MBA in data sciences, you need an understanding of maths very clearly, and and many other things. If you are not a math student, you should not possibly choose uh, MBA in data sciences. At, I at if, a broad level. If I, I think if you've not had Math, science, math in 11 and 12. Yeah. Then getting into data science. I mean, uh, I'm not saying you can't do it, but uh, something something should have happened in the period between your 12 and now where yeah, you yeah. have you are confident of your math skills. Yeah. And whereas, also technology. A little bit of tech. A bit of tech, right. Yeah, yeah. And whereas for MBA and business management, 
even a commerce student and many other students can get into it as long as they have an understanding of business and understanding of how to deal with data as it comes in yes this is for for a for a for an mba in business analytics uh, I, I, i mean you need to have a reasonable what what i what i have started terming as data fluency that means when you look at an excel sheet there are you know rows and columns so with training little bit of training one is you should be interested in understanding what this excel sheet says and secondly you should be capable of understanding you know uh, very quickly figuring it out you know should i do a pivot should i do a vertical look up even that is good enough uh, to to get into business and rest the i think the institute will take care you know they'll take put them through the machine learning and statistics and 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 uh, and visualization and all those things so uh, particularly we have a good mix of both male and female students i think the ratio is 1/3 to 2/3 coming to the experience uh, background of students we have around 30% of students who have less than one year of experience but we have rich 50% of students which who have one to three years of experience and this and for data scientists right ma'am right. yes mba in business yeah. analytics so and then there are some students who have more than three years of experience as well so i think that is very important also and that brings a very good discussion in the classroom and uh, but for students who do not uh, as uh, charan preet sir said that for students who do not have those kind of background industry experience in technology we like we also take commerce students but for them what we do is we have some foundational courses which start before the normal courses of the semester starts so we have things like uh, basics of information systems basics of spreadsheets and basics of mathematics also but in general we still ask for 12th uh, mathematics background because that creates an interest in students having left mathematics for a long period of time makes you redundant in that sense professor tushar uh, you have a general mba and you have a specialized mba which is especially in data science and business, business analytics right uh, what is the kind of proportion of stem students who take a general mba versus uh, the specialization that we are we are talking about okay okay approximately we can say like uh, 20 to 30 percentage uh, we can say roughly charan because you offer everything can you yes. uh, uh, tell me how this works yeah so uh, in our mb in our uh, data science uh, i'll also tell you the numbers i mean the the, uh, the business analytics pgdm uh, specialization batch would be much much larger than the data science batch because uh, and our our data science uh, special uh, specialization students actually study together with the standalone data science program so they they merge with that batch in the second year uh, right and that's maybe five students in a batch right and they would all be uh, with a tech background uh, minimum a bsc mostly engineers right uh, bsc could be ecostat math also because then their math is really well covered and they they need to bother about the tech part only right on the business analytics side i would say uh, it it's actually a reflection of the overall uh, you know uh, let's say uh, profile of the batch is just the guy the people who have shown more more intent and have done well in the math and quant and uh, you know technology uh, courses uh, who who come through so uh, i would say for example a strong commerce student has a better chance of getting into our business analytics program than a, a weak engineer if i if if you want i don't want to say weak but a, let's say an engineer with less intent so okay so so it's 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 like i would say 60 to 70% would be non stem 30% would be stem because that's the kind of profile we get of oh, students okay. yeah yeah you know when i talked of diversity i was talking of the stem versus non stem uh, in your general mba versus your specialization is there a, a shift in the ratio in some sense we are also very new in this area so we have we have started like just two years back okay. and we have uh, actually we have shifted our mba program to the mumbai campus so yeah. uh, the general mba program yeah. so we have we are actually kind of maintaining the ratio so we okay. are we had 65 students so in the our mba brand program and now again for analytics also we have the same ratio Professor Charan, this is over to you uh, because ultimately students look at uh, and uh, Professor Tushar earlier said that you know they need to any person who does an MBA 
is going to stick with it for uh, some uh, longer time and not just the first job that they get themselves into. So can you tell me the kind of prospects that a specialization in of MBA in data sciences and MBA in business ma- uh, analytics that has in, and just don't look at the immediate placement but beyond that also please. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so we we have uh, so we started in 2011 with our standalone business analytics program. Sorry, <clears throat> but uh, we only got the confidence to offer it as a specialization in I think 2015 or 16 with the with the PGDM, yeah. right? And and since then uh, we have seen a massive shift over the COVID period. The demand for these skills has gone up dramatically. We always thought there should be a demand. But I think that you know it has actually now now we can see it. So two three things uh, happen. Number one is that consulting companies, the big four and all that, we were not able to attract easily for our PGDM program. Now come because they look for for them this combination of business understanding and analytic skills is very very effective, right? So and and consulting, I think the route is the same as any consultant. So I mean, if you look at it this way, analytics is as much a horizontal as finance. I mean, you know, finance skills are required in every sector. And similarly, analytic skills are required in every sector. Similarly, marketing skills are required in every sector. But analytic skills are not as easy to find because it's a nascent industry. So, uh, so consultants require that uh, at a you know campus level to strengthen their team who can deal with data. So, so that's one uh, one area, and the, the route is the same. You you join as a consultant or a senior consultant, depending on your, you know, pedigree and your a, you know, your your experience, and then you move up the ladder. You know, you 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 should end up being a partner. So you get into principal consultant. So we have people who have become principal consultants already, right? So that's one route, and then the other is the captive, which is BFSI is a big uh, recruiter again. You know, they because they have data. They, they have reliable data and they have compliances and regulations. So they have been in there. They are, I think, ahead of the curve compared to other sectors in the use of data science. And so they recruit. So for them, they either recruit for their, for example, an ICICI bank would recruit for their Hyderabad center, which is the their analytics center, where you kind of move up within the analytics uh, you know, domain. Or sometimes they could even hire you as a bank could hire you as a regular, let's say, uh, in in a part of the corporate finance team, but with somebody who can actually deal with data. So he or she becomes their representative in terms of the data part of it. So and and then FMCG companies are showing interest now. They have their own analytics teams, MNCs, and and uh, see see for them uh, uh, they go to the top IMs for their management training. Uh, you know, programs, because those are very, very well-established traditional programs, but their analytics teams are much larger where, you know, institutes like us get a look in because we have created that. So for a, for, for a, for a student who wants to join, uh, you know, uh, let's say, let's say a Colgate uh, and and can't get a 99 percentile and get into an IM, you're getting into business and the analytics, global analytics team of Colgate is a very good start. And from there, anything can happen. Yeah. Okay. So, so these are some of, yeah. So th- these are interesting roles. So we are also learning every time we have very, and, and even manufacturing, uh, manufacturing is hiring analytics people also because they do a lot of uh, uh, on, in operations as well as, you know, they also use deep learning uh, and, and they also, uh, and, and modeling. So, so these are, so the route is, I think uh, we haven't seen a full cycle. So we, we, know, we don't know, but from in consulting and in BFSI, I think these are very well-established routes. Okay. Professor Tushar, uh, about the, see, because data sciences is, a, is a, at least MBA and data sciences has come up over the, over, over the last decade only. Uh, do you have a lot more industry faculty teaching students in this specialization as compared to a general MBA? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, uh, I'll take my example only. Like uh, I'm having uh, 11 plus years of IT industry experience. As I'm having passion for teaching, uh, uh, I'm I'm, I'm here at NBS. But if you see, uh, there are so many other, uh, you know, uh, uh, people who are 
are actually uh, you know the industry they are building the data warehousing they are building the data lakes they are into the aws uh, uh, web services or cloud based uh, uh, thing right but at the same time uh, if you see they also need to go through the uh, you know programs from such reputed institutions like bitspilani nbs or any other uh, xyz universities for their uh, uh, you know managerial skills for their uh, you know business oriented aspect because as a tech part i have done my m tech okay so I, I i can say like from the data side from the domain side expertise i will really not have uh, because i am not into that background but whenever we we have to deal with the business analyst in the company in the uh, in the industry we definitely need to go into that particular route as well we need to understand the data how the data is coming uh, what what exactly the supply chain management is there for any uh, you know manufacturing company all those terms we need to uh, be aware of so that we can deal with the client easily so it's it's like a, a both way people are going people are going to the academics for uh, you know taking sessions from the tech side as well as they are uh, you know taking session from the uh, uh, academics for their uh, managerial or uh, uh, this business kind of uh, skill set to improve those areas okay so i i see definitely i see so many people are actually into this adjunct uh, faculty profile uh, with many uh, universities for delivering the expert sessions on the big data analytics on data warehousing on python on r programming languages visualization uh, with excel uh, recently only i delivered one session with iit gandhinagar where uh, definitely they were in the need uh, uh, to give some big data analytics background because it was not heavily integrated in their uh, graduation syllabus okay so uh, so people are, are actually interested and are actually moving uh, you know one step ahead into whatever is there in their curriculum they they want to uh, you know grab all of the things they want to uh, have uh, area of expertise in in more than one or more than two or three uh, domains so yeah it's it's uh, both way around actually so shelly again um... when companies come for placement at uh, i know that yours is a very young institution so uh, 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 when companies come in and uh, for recruitment and all do you see uh, uh, some kind of a different profile of companies coming for specializations as compared to a general mba so i'll answer this question in two three points so first point is uh, for our we have we are very old institution So even if uh, so, as I said, my first statement was now business analytics cuts across industries. So no matter which company is landing, it it needs people from, with this kind of background, right? So uh, major is the BFSI industry for now, but uh, other than banking and insurance also now the retail industry or it may be even the energy sector. So in at which even our undergrad students who are doing core engineering. they are coming and doing analytics courses or as an open elective with us so that they are hired into those roles in those companies so no matter which company is coming they have some positions for business analytics role in each of those across industries second is um, we have a very rich alumni profile so that provides a very rich network for students not only for learning and engagements but also for hiring for job prospects also and third is we have a very unique six months practice station program wherein we engage students for entire one semester to build on their academic learning with bridging it with uh, industry practices so how actually practically those learnings are applied in the industry that sort of learning happens for students and a lot of students get pto also out of those engagements additionally uh, many a times companies actually in Uh, pay them so it's not like uh, for the entire semester they are unpaid many students get paid for those uh, six months practice sessions so that kind of setup we have at which plan so professor charan again i'll pose the same question because students look at this response to be the biggest response you know of what kind of companies what kind of job profile and what kind of placements and everything so we'll dwell a bit more on this one right uh, at praxis uh, what are the kind of companies that come for general mba versus data sciences mba versus business analytics mba right yeah uh, so i think i will agree uh, agree with professor shelly saying that any company that comes to campus let's say even if they want to recruit uh, marketing uh, you know uh, specialists 
if you have business analytics on your cv they get a little more interested in you right so i mean at praxis you can do a business analytics with finance as a specialization or one business analytics with marketing or you can have just be a pure play business analytics and you could actually so that's what we encourage people to do that even if you want to pursue finance so within business analytics we have a few open electives there you don't have to really qualify so we 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 urge them to do it because moment you have those projects and those skills on your cv the the pros, your prospects increase because companies are struggling to get people who are data savvy and visualization savvy and you know who understand uh, you know inter, who can interpret data right so so that is one part the second part is that as i said you know the, there are a few few companies like uh, the big you know couple of the big four and and consultants of that who come for our stand alone data science program and because of that they also come for our pgdm in data science as well as pgdm as well as business analytics they are not they will not necessarily recruit from our other specializations right so that that is something that happens uh, and uh, in terms of there are two other things which are very interesting like this year in our on our day zero at the end of day zero we had only three people with analytics specializations who were not yet placed right so i mean you know and and interview started at 5 in the morning so this is this is for us <laughs> history right i mean it's not happened and it's because of the demand for these skills right so so and and whereas it's not that others didn't get jobs and all but we could see the uh, you know and also in terms of the average salaries and all that there was a reasonable difference i don't want to kind of give a give away numbers there and all i don't want to discourage people from doing other specializations because eventually it's your career but i think if you have these skills with you uh, you certainly have an advantage at least in the medium term i don't know at, be- before these skills become you know common place where everybody has them at this point in time there is definitely a gap Professor Tushar, would you want to add anything to what Professor Charan said just now about this? Yeah, yeah, he 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 spoke uh, perfectly. Uh, you know uh, what what I wanted to convey actually, because whenever the companies come uh, uh, in a normal MBA or any B school, they are looking into the profiles who are who are doing something extra beyond MBA. So if they have done MBA in uh, business analytics or MBA in data science or PGDM in uh, both basically, which we are offering, so definitely they are. actually having one confidence like this person is from the pgdm background or uh, you know uh, mba background he would be good with management skills but what extra he can do okay and in corporate always i have worked with uh, corporate so they always try to push you one step ahead one step extra to what what you are comfortable with you have to come out of your comfort zone so uh, a person who is uh, having a post graduation degree uh, which is having mba plus something extra then definitely that would uh, 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 you know grab more eyeballs and uh, uh, definitely the salary packages and everything if we see that, that is in their favor uh, into the data science and business analytics courses we we see we see uh, a shift in the salary average packages whatever they offer so definitely it's an added advantage so rightly said that i i i yeah. can agree So, so Shelly, this is uh, your bits pilani. You are an institute of eminence. You have a legacy of fifty, seventy, five hundred years. You have an alumni all over the world. Uh, how unfair or fair? Uh, I think how uh, advantages is it for a student choosing that kind of an institution? Uh, and uh, and and because of the legacy that you have, uh, the kind of recruitment, the kind of internship, the kind of you use the word PPOs, right? So. can you just elaborate on that space please of uh, and of course you are offer you because you are a university also offer an mba as compared to a pgdm that others offer so can you just elaborate on this piece ma'am definitely so first of all uh, i want discourage students who are joining at some other uh, elite institutes because see the pie is large so everybody has space to play so that's a positive point so wherever you land up business analytics is a huge market and everybody can take a part in it right coming to bits pilani so we have a huge legacy and we are building on that our uh, to suddenly we shifted for, from mba program to mba in business analytics it happened in 2019 itself and our first batch is yet to pass 92% people are placed already only 8% students are left and till june our program is running so we have 
like five six months time to place their main students. Uh, big companies, the big four land up in our campus, and we are able to place our students in those companies. So academically, we are uh, we have a lot of courses to offer to them. We have uh, because we have a complete university. So we have a department of computer science also. People come from there as well. We have visiting faculties coming from a lot of good institutes like IITs and IIMs, uh, who are who excel in business analytics. And then we have our own in-house faculties who have this kind of background. So our program is structured in a way that from starting itself we have. Uh, like if you have eight courses, three courses are in the direction of business analytics, and remaining five would be on the general management. So that we do it for the first year, and finally in the last trimester, uh, in the third semester, we completely build it, the ratio reverses. So three courses on general management and five courses on business business analytics, and finally in the last term, as I said before, we have a practice school. Additionally, we have a two month summer internship in the in between in the first year uh, tenure. So eight months in two years program, you have eight months industry experience, and the remaining time, sixteen months, go into your academic development. Additionally, we have a lot of uh, industry connects in form of webinars and in form of certifications. We have alumni coming up, and then companies, and it's a, it's a, it's a rich ground actually. So yes, Bits Pilani gives an advantage to students on those areas, and uh, but again. to end also on a positive note uh, business analytics is a huge field growing at almost 30% cagr rate so everybody has a role to play uh, professor charan uh, professor shaili talked of internships and then uh, you know uh, ppo and then placement right how important is internships in in this specialization especially Oh, tremendously important, and uh, so in in any PGDM you do have summer internship, and uh, the, and this is so for us we don't have a PGDM in business analytics. We have a PGDM with a specialization in one of the specializations that we offer. So yeah, so summer internships are very important, and all the industry has also evolved because four or five years back when we started this, people did not have, you know, internships architected around analytics. They didn't know what to put together, you know, from a from an industry perspective. Uh, right now we have there are a couple of companies who are tying up with us uh, you know or an mnc fmc is tying up with us where they want to do summer internship and then have interventions throughout the program uh, to to have them trained because they say that you know your your students last between one and a half to two years okay by the time they start contribution contributing they get jobs elsewhere so we want to in, and we are not, i don't think we can change that to five so we want to train them so that day one when they come they are so so there are so now these these things have started happening so and and performance in summer internships so one of the success criteria that we look for in in each of our specializations is the pp uh, you know the internship to ppo ratio yeah right and and uh, what you you know how much you get paid for an internship and how rigorous it is and all so that there again analytics is very very strong because if the students uh you know perform during the internship then uh, companies don't want to let let uh, go of them so so it it's 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 absolutely necessary that these people get a a flavor of analytics in those two two and a half months yeah okay yeah. can you uh, throw some numbers in terms of what are the kind of internship uh, stipend they get and what are the kind of placement salaries they get uh, Okay, so ours is a smaller school, so the numbers will not will, will probably not be you know at an IIM level or something like that. So, uh, yeah, so we have uh, internship numbers going up to seventy five thousand rupees a month. Yeah, for for uh, internship uh, starting, I think the average would be around thirty maybe. Okay, and uh, then then uh, our average this year, our average for the analytics batch. Would be between twelve and thirteen PA, you know, LPA uh, per 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 year, which is uh, which is a little higher than if you look at the overall batch uh, average. We still we we still have about five people to go to place overall. Uh, analytics is all placed now, and so our yeah. we already have the average in in that sense. So uh, I think three things. One is the speed of placement. So you are done with it mostly on day zero because people want and they come for you. uh the second is the the 
the stipe, the salaries that you get, which are, you know, you, you got into practice because you couldn't get into one of the IMs. I mean, I'm very clear on that. So given, you know, the, the choice you made, the salary you get is, is, is beyond your expectation uh, and, and, and uh, higher than what others are getting. So that is number two. And third is the, quali the quality of the job. You know, because you are you are in a in a role which where you are making helping company make better decisions, and you are you are you are involved in that process day one, uh, and and for people who want to do uh, thinking work, cerebral work, I mean this is a great uh, opportunity, because it you you know it is all cerebral whether it is business analytics or data science, uh, you use your uh, you know analytical thinking, you use your uh, you know, power of uh, your understanding of numbers, problem solving skills, all those good things we talk about. And you get, you get thrown new problems all the time. So we talk to students, they said that even if you work for the same companies, you're always working on something else. How big is the difference between uh, an average salary of a normal MBA versus MBA in business analytics versus data sciences? I would say data science would be at this point in time, very small number. So it's a very unfair compare. We teach students that don't compare you know, populations which are very, very... Yeah, but different. students do compare. You can't stop yeah, them. Yeah, right? we, we can do that. So I, I can tell you. Yeah, so I would say that a data science average, especially because the number is very small and they're really good guys, is about 15, 15 to 15% more than an analytics average salary, which is another between 15 and 20% more than... Okay. Uh, yeah. The average of the others. I mean, okay. if you take it, just the others. Overall average, it will be maybe 10% more. Sir, my question is that if an engineering undergraduate uh, goes to a role of uh, business analytics, what he will be doing? And if one uh, do the MBA, then what role he or she will be doing? Actually, it's, there's no, there's no uh, you know, common answer. It depends on what, uh, you know, what sector you go to. But one thing they would be doing is that they would be looking at lots of data. Uh, they would be solving, uh, you know, uh, pain point. They would be addressing pain points of the business. Uh, so I can give you some examples. Let's say in a bank, you know, you would be saying that, okay, you know, fine, I have these products and I want to target these products more sharply so that I get a better bang out of my advertising buck, buck you know, my, my, you know, my marketing buck. So, so can, can we, can we interpret the models that data scientists have built better? And can we, so do we know that if this is this, you know, which of our customers should be sent a mailer with this product and what should be the frequency of those mailers and should it be an SMS or a mailer or a WhatsApp, uh, uh, you know, so, so it, it keeps going deeper and deeper, right? And, and you can actually today segment the market to one individual. And, and, you know, you, you, so you understand the individual to a level where you know whether you should call the person or send a message or write a, you know, write a mailer and which product. So that is one part of it. If you get a little deeper into it in the bank, you could also be participating in risk management. So they have operational risk, marketing risk, financial risk, and all these risks. So looking at data and saying how much risk is the bank exposed to and how can we manage that risk, right? So retail, you know, how can I perform, you know, improve the performance of a store? looking at footfall, conversions, invoice value, you know, market basket analysis. What are you buying with? So you're buying eggs from me, but you're not buying bread from me. So are you buying bread elsewhere? And how can I get you to buy bread? So can I send you a discount on bread? Now this at, at a very, I mean, I'm saying at a very conversational level so people can understand. And these are very interesting problems, right? Uh, which you work on. And that's, that's the, that's the thing you do. I was asking like, uh, if one gets into the role of business analytics, uh, it's all about the software dealings here, you know, like you need to know about software and all kind of things. Then only you can succeed in this field or any other kind of work also involved. So, Tushar, would you want to take this question? Basically, he's asking whether you need to be a, a B-Tech guy before you jump onto this, if I were to just put things in simple words. So, definitely, uh, your background... Uh, uh, should be having somewhat technical background okay if you are not having then wisely choose the university which is offering the courses which is uh, you know uh, uh, making your technical background also strong but it is not tech heavy uh, job uh, business analysts are mostly uh, into the uh, managerial side business side as well as they have some technical knowledge like uh, the python programming language r programming language and sql querying 
all those things so it is not that much uh, or you should not be a pro coder i would say a professional coder uh, to work in the business analyst domain you should have uh, like 70 uh, 30 you should have you should be like 30 percent it sound with your uh, technical concepts whatever i talk as well as 70 percent about the uh, uh, data driven businesses like how how the data is helping to the business because that is where uh, you will be helping them okay for for the technical side they are all, already having the technical guys is uh, their uh, you know a technical team is there which is which is like uh, uh, back end developers who are working uh, uh, day and night for you but you will you would be the front face of the business uh, you would be understanding the business first then you will be performing some analysis and for for your help you will be having data engineers who, who can help you and they would be more tech savvy okay so i would say like data science is a very huge umbrella okay uh, where business analytics is like what 10 20% is what data science can focus into okay we have so many other things we have machine learning we have deep learning we have data analysis we have data engineering okay which which can cater so many different roles okay so depending on your likes and interest uh, okay and the current market uh, trend uh, okay because you would be the change maker you would be the trend setter uh, is this job is actually to change the business uh, uh, you know uh, di uh, dimensions they need to grow the business so responsibility is very huge okay so you you have to uh, choose the job role according to your likes and uh, finally see the university which course they are offering to uh, what foundations they are clearing to any commerce based student for example any commerce guy is coming which is not having any technical background right but his fundamentals are strong with the business or management okay then what the university is offering to you should actually see uh, suhil so professor shetri i just want you to add to this because uh, there might be differing opinions or extension of the opinions at bits pilani for mba in business analytics do you take in bcom student as simple as that yes we do take only thing is they should have a mathematics background in 10 plus 2 absolutely so what we are saying is uh, just to extend what tushar has said uh, suvin uh, professor tushar has said uh, you need to have a basic understanding of mathematics at class 12th level uh, and that is good enough for you to do an mba in uh, business analytics at a, a post grad level Uh, okay. so you can be a bcom student also but at class 12 level you need to have maths because you need to uh, you know be able to deal with data uh, uh, and make stories out of it make analyze that and create a, a you know story around it so your understanding of numbers how you play with numbers how you understand numbers how you can uh, you know make deductions out of numbers is very important that comes from the class 12 mathematics level but after that you can do be a bcom student also and st still do a mba in uh, business analytics sir actually i was asking ki i'm a commerce student and i'm currently pursuing bcom and i was thinking that uh, can i pursue for that uh, this business analytics because i heard from my friends this is good and i just need a crystal clear answer sir prosin karan yeah yes rahul so the the i mean i think the question you have to answer is why do you want to pursue business analytics is it because people are saying it's good or do you know what it is and you want to do it i think that is the first question you need to figure out uh, and uh, while you are doing bcom you have to also uh, you know answer answer this to yourself that do you like numbers do you like working with numbers do numbers make sense to you you know uh, and uh, Uh, and do you like solving problems? Do you do Sudoku? I mean, are you a, you know if you are interested in numbers, it's a great great place to go, right? But don't force yourself to go there because people say there are prospects. You have to you know as we always say you know your capability, your interest, your capability, your interest, and uh, you know opportunities the, where these three circles meet, the Venn diagram you know where they intersect is where your career is. so uh, so that's I, i i mean to answer your question that can you go for business analytics absolutely right absolutely yes but you should be confident of your understanding of data i won't even call it math because when i am an engineer so the moment i say math it goes into totally different so I rahul i'll respond to uh, yes. i'll extend that response of what professor jarenpri uh, said i'm yeah. a bcom student i'm a ca i should be a ca everything right the simple thing is this that i know how to deal with numbers you give me a annual report or a financial statement i'll make 25 ratios out of that and tell you whether the company is good bad ugly right because i understand how to play with numbers i'm a bcom student 
Now, I'm a good student for MBA in business analytics. But because of my background of uh, BCom, I may not be a good student for B, uh, MBA in data sciences. Correct. Right. So as a BCom student with a great interest, and because look at it, in financial markets, in stock markets, a lot of people are... Uh, you know, finance manage, uh, management people or CAS and those kind of things or BCom students, right? But they do play the stock market much better than possibly a P-Tech student in many cases, right? So because they understand numbers, they know how to deal with ratios and you, they know how to project the future of a company in terms of numbers. Uh, and they do a very good job of that. Those people are very good at, uh, they're very capable of doing an MBA in business analytics, but they are not capable of doing an MBA in data sciences. Professor, am I right in saying this? Absolutely right. Absolutely yeah. right. And and yeah. And and so I I say something at Praxis that if a student can do weighted average, you know, <laughs> I mean I see pro, I see prospects that can do a business analytics because you know that's basics, right? Yeah. If, yeah. If, if or CAGR, you know, for example. How much time? How many will these people? I mean, people get confused in that. So if you get stuck in that and you have to start using your calculator to do that, and you know, you know, how do I do it? So arithmetic, you know. If you're strong in arithmetic, that means yeah, your logic yeah. of numbers is good. <laughs> then you will, yeah. you can fly. Sir, I scored 93.5 percentile after only two months of preparation. If I give the exam again, I think I can score 99 plus. So could you give me suggestions for the same? I think this question, you know, it's, uh, you must all remember students that the score that you score, uh, you know, have in CAD is not necessarily a pathway for you to get into a good B school. Because even in IIMs, the weightage of a CAT percentile is not even 40-45%. It's the kind of profile that you have, the work ex that you have, uh, what you scored in your past also. So many things matter. So don't bring it down to what's your CAT percentile. That's important, but that's not the only criteria that you deal with. If you, uh, Good institutions these days are offering a 70 percentile student with a different profile and ma making them get into the best institution possible. Though, and 98% students are rejected also at the same time. So understand that a CAT, CAT percentile is like a passport. It doesn't mean a visa or an employment guarantee. Uh, so that's what you got. Uh, uh, so you must remember this student because a lot of students keep coming back to me saying, listen, I've got so much percentile, so would I get into IIMs? You will get a call from IIMs. doesn't mean that you get into IIMs. As much as you get a passport, but it doesn't mean that you get an immigration visa, right? So just remember this, I think. And I've taken this question, I've taken the liberty of answering this question, Sharon, because this is across the board and cuts across the specialty. So there is one question that uh, a student is sending it to me. Uh, is there a possibility that the bigger companies will prefer to take a student from MBA, general MBA, then go for a specialization? Is that a possibility, Shaila uh, that, you know, companies prefer to go for a general MBA because they might later push them into different roles and not just stick them to a particular role? First of all, I feel it will depend. It will be depending on the role they are offering. And second, I feel as uh, Professor Charanpreet also said, uh, people prefer uh, candidates which have some analytics background added on their general MBA knowledge. So I don't think so that can be a case, but depending on the role of them. Yes. Professor Tushar, what, how, does it, how do you look at this? Yeah, I, I agree. So basically any company, uh, uh, because data is the future, that's the only reason because uh, be, uh, due to the pandemic, actually one industry which didn't stop, that is data driven industry. Okay, that actually growth exponentially in the last three years. Okay, the jobs and everything. So according to me, if they are having any specialization, it's not like stuck into any particular role, uh, like a general MBA guy can also stuck into a particular role because uh, he is not capable enough. Okay, so it is up to you and uh, the company is definitely looking for specialization. Um, that, that is what I have seen uh, uh, in my professional as well as academic career. Companies are looking for specialization role and uh, definitely they are having that particular job opportunities and they are having the openings and uh, this industry is going to boom in the next 10 years. So it's not like stucking into any particular role. So I, I, I feel like uh, uh, if we are having general MBA uh, versus specialized MBA, uh, recruiters would go to specialized MBA uh, person, definitely. That, that is, is that my fair, opinion. Is that a fair assumption, uh, Charan? I don't know. I think it, the industry is very heterogeneous, actually. Heterogeneous. Right. So I, I, I will give an example of TAS, the Tata Administrative Service. Now, they look for generalists, right? Okay. Like, now, they give them, they rotate them across the company. 
but but when you go to a, any institution most people will have a specialization right i mean somebody would have specialized in marketing somebody would have specialized in finance you know finmark or markfin is very popular you do both right so because you have to do something in the second year isn't it I mean, you know and, and 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 there are you know and and you can't just pick two two courses from each most people don't do that because then you you know you, you know you don't get interested it's like repeating the first year with a plus plus so you do pick maybe one or two specializations so there is no candidate who is absolutely general in that sense in an interview and let's say an fmcg comes i would be surprised if they are looking for a general person they would i will be looking for branding uh, uh, or they would be looking for sales or they would be looking for supply chain so they will look for specific skills right so they some and, and, and most of the top iams um, um, uh, correct me if i am wrong they don't even have a specialization in, on their yeah so neither do we 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 actually act like them maybe we are not them but we always act like them <laughs> so we don't so now Uh, so so it 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 depends on you know who you are interviewing with what they are looking for and do you have some skills <laughs> and knowledge to fit that uh, you know that requirement no i so, i understand because see this is something that um, i as a counselor uh, have experienced that uh, i won't name the institution at this point of time because it's not relevant but 3 years back um, a retail management company went to a b school which offers mba and mba in retail management and chose the mbas So the the students who were pursuing retail management actually protested because they said if a retail management co- company doesn't even visit us, then what is our future, right? And the question was then the response came back saying these people are looking at generalists and not uh, people who will manage uh, helm the retail management function at at the stores. So right. obviously it depends on the roles, but uh, there is this uh, uh, you know at times uh, uh, companies do prefer to take general general management students. but you are right uh, uh, all of you the professor tushar also talked about about it it is the elective that you take in mba that might also you know uh, thing because ultimately companies are looking for what is the additional skill that you gained beyond what you learned and that is the elect- elective stuff that you take mm-hmm. the specialization that you take within the whole thing so that that works actually yeah i have one more point here when I, when we were a recruiter when we would go to a b school a top b school right so we would always go to the main program exactly. not because Classic we were program. not looking for specialized skills because we know this guy had a higher score you know because i mean let's say you go to iim ahmedabad i mean there will be very few people who will go to the agriculture uh, thing if they got into or or even accelerate today if you get a higher score you go to the bm program and not the not the hr program similarly with nmims you go to the main program if you don't get it you go to the finance although they are very good at finance so some recruiters play it like that also yeah. that you know we want to see which what test has he you know crossed and and uh, was was he a first choice or was was he a second choice in that so lots of things a yeah. lot of uh, dynamics in i i don't think we should try to demystify it i think we should study what we want to study and 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 <laughs> you know, well yeah <laughs> i i think that's that's a very good statement to end this and i would give each of you some time uh, that you know if you are interested in numbers you deal with numbers you love numbers go for mba and business analytics because it gives you an additional skill beyond the mba so you will fit into any company any industry in a particular role and if you are a geek deal with technology or a uh, stem student and love uh, uh, being a geek then you must to, uh, choose an mba in data sciences i think that's the thing uh, so each of you process shelly can you start you know tell them what exactly you know your closing remarks please so i would just encourage students to uh, go for some sort of post graduation first of all literacy is a problem Absolutely. in india yeah, yeah. so definitely that's mba important. general or whether it is specialization in some field of mba or business analytics data sciences whatever we need post graduates we need people who are more literate right second point is for analytics i would say we are we are running a single program only mba in business analytics so for analytics i could say that it's a, it's a huge market it will be growing for next three decades so there is no saturation coming down the line till 2050 so you have a huge role to play and if students are interested in numbers as all of us agree then they should uh, may it be they are from commerce background or any other background if they have some interest 
and some intend to learn in this direction they should uh, proceed with this form of mba and uh, depending on their intellectual capability they will land up in one or the other institution but the market is such a big market that it doesn't matter who will have good prospective career all right so my best wishes to all the attendees and to all the students Uh, definitely you should do some post graduation uh, uh, whether it is like uh, mba or uh, pgdm in specialization or in general it is up to you your uh, interest whatever your heart says whatever your likings are whatever your dislikings are based on that you should take a call okay rather than uh, you know uh, parents influence or uh, friends influence or any other influence uh, we can just guide you but ultimately you are the decision maker who has to take the decision so uh, just see See what you actually like. Okay, uh, people are there for counseling, so definitely you can talk to them uh, uh, as many times you want. But ultimately, you know uh, in your heart what exactly you want to do. Okay, so just don't go by the uh, you know salary numbers or average packages, whatever uh, uh, you know there for any particular role. Ultimately, it's uh, it's your choice what what you are going to work for uh, uh, more like twenty uh, five to thirty years in your life. So definitely you should do something what you like. Okay, and uh, coming to the The programs like NBS is having uh, uh, a program like PGDM in data science and business analytics. Okay, so we are offering both the uh, things. Okay, if you are good with number, let us say you are from the commerce background, but by uh, any unfortunate reason you were not liking the uh, uh, few things like physics or chemistry or something, and you didn't choose the science in your uh, uh, you know plus two. At that uh, at that particular time you like computers at least. You like the software. You like some some sort of coding or something. Okay. Okay, logic is good uh, with you then you can definitely be with the data science team that is that is no harm and uh, uh, you know this program is actually a combined data science plus business analytics so the door is open for both the programs for you both the roles okay so uh, take your decisions okay you can uh, visit our website where we have actually uh, uh, posted the entire course of the uh, Two years in the PGDM uh, for data science and business analytics. It's a single course. Okay, so yeah, take the decision, uh, you know, wisely and whatever is best for you, uh, you should take that. And uh, uh, the market is good. Okay, and any 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 way wherever you are going. So I wish all the best to all the participants. Okay, thank you. Uh, Being data savvy is not no longer an option. You have to be data savvy. So you can either do it formally. by getting into an mba in business analytics or or you know you because you know i i can't think of any job post an mba where you will not have to deal with data and at an increasing rate every day right so i think it makes eminent sense to get trained in those two years so that you are better at it than others i mean you know i look at it that way so i'll tell you what happens at praxis so we teach data visualization with tableau and power bi in the first year itself to everybody because we feel visualization is a is, is is a very fundamental thing you know you don't have to be a business analytics specialized specialist to do data visualization so when they go for their summer internships everybody makes ppts and uses excel and these people make their charts in in tableau okay so suddenly the recruiter says hey these guys you know so i'm not saying that their their uh, you know structure is better or their analysis is better but the fact that they are using a contemporary tool immediately gives them an edge and and people are interested you know so that we use that as a marketing tool actually okay so so i think that you need to uh, look at data seriously if you want to fall if you want to become a business leader because you have to make your decisions based on data and not on you know others opinions or your opinion and you have to be honest about making opinion you know your decisions about data so i think business analytics data science whatever you call it i think these are excellent options and if you are you should count yourself lucky if you are you know if if you are able to do it right so if so any i we our director is a very he says some things which are great you know dr prithish mukherji he said that somebody who is good at numbers and tech and tech and is not getting into analytics and data science is stupid i mean you know so if you are good at this you have to get it I think that's that's what I would say. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thank so you so much, much panel. Uh, you're brilliant, and uh, I'll reach out to you at some point in time to have one more session on because I think uh, MBA in data sciences and, uh, and business analytics is really growing as a subject, and we need to delve deeper into this subject as much as possible to 
expand and maybe evangelize this uh, space also. Otherwise, people do prefer general management as compared to anything else. So that's the effort that we are making here. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. And all the best to all the audience here. Thank you. Bye, students. Uh, and by the way, the last thing, students, just do PG, you know, post graduation, whatever it is, just do post graduation. Don't leave your education at undergrad because moving forward at some point in time, your career would get stunted because you're not a post graduate. So please, please, for your own sake, do, do post graduation. Otherwise, 10 years, 15 years down the line, you will see a, a stunted uh, growth in your career path. So just be careful about that.